Right, this is a Philips PM335 digital and analog oscilloscope harking back from about the mid 90s and the reason I've got this is because it's knackered. Now I like these because I used to use one very similar to this, probably just the analog version at work 25 years ago and I just really like the look of it with all the buttons and the little LCD display I thought it was really good looking compared to all the other ones with big knobs, little knobs Yeah, I just prefer the look of this one so this is actually the second one of these I've got um, the other one I'm having a bit more trouble with than I expected however this one does have the problem I did expect it to have and it does still work but it makes a bit of a smell so I shan't be powering it on so I've taken the lid off already and I can see exactly what the problem is and it's the mains filter cap which is quite a common fault with these so the first thing that we've got to do is get the power supply board out and that is situated in here and it's a bastard to get out an absolute bastard so let's have a go at it okay so I've assembled a few tools there's a flathead screwdriver and some prying bars and a cable tie we'll see how that's used in a second uh, there's also the power bar this red rod here and this fits in something like that and the mains switch is this black and white assembly here now, it, the first time I did this, it took me a while to get it off. I was trying to pull the thing off, pry it off that way. If you look at it, where is it? Yeah, so that's that, and it sits, and it gets pushed, pushed onto the switch like that. So to remove it, you need to you need to pull it up it takes quite a bit of force but that's how it comes off so don't try and don't try and pull it off from the front lift it off and that will save you having to replace a switch so this is the power supply board here You've got these two big uh, smoothing caps there And down there you can see what I would call the line output transformer which feeds the anode cap on the top of the tube there and there's quite a few little connectors you can actually get the board out with the majority of the connectors still attached you will need to take off the graticule lamp attached there and that's knackered as well so I've got to try and find one of those <clears throat> uh, luckily with this one I have GPIB and RS232 and that is controlled off that board there just behind the control panel uh, the other one that I have of these doesn't have that so that's nice <laughs> Uh, one other <coughs> point of note is the battery for the memory. It's very easily removed. Just push that forward. When I got it, there were batteries in there and they were starting to leak. So if you buy one of these and it's got the batteries in it, do yourself a favour and get them out. And be careful of these cables here because I expect you've got Buckley's chance 
of getting any new ones of those. Right, what I'm going to do is show you about the cable tie. Now, this is the board from the other model that I have, and this is the capacitor in question on the other board. And this is the one I pulled out of this board here, which when you test it, yeah, it's in pretty good shape considering it's 25 years old and is known for blowing itself up. I've also replaced that one and that one. These are all reefer caps, renowned for letting the magic smoke go. They're replaced and it's yeah still not solved the problem. Right, so the cable tie. You're saying, what the hell is he doing with a cable tie? And I will show you. Uh, the board is an absolute pain to get out. And what I've done with the cable tie is I've looped it around the back of the case through this hole here. And there's enough space in the front for you to just be able to pick up, pick up the end of that, loop it round, and then yank the board out. The board's pretty toughly made. Um, now on this side, I know you're all going to scream, but I'll leave it out, these caps. So, they're two pin caps, but they are, there's an extra pin in there, I guess, for stability. Um, they're pretty tough. They survived. So, yeah, absolute pain in the backside to get it out. But there it is. Um, now, while we're here, and while I'm waiting for the battery to charge in my camera, unfortunately, this is a double-sided PCB and I've removed five capacitors from this area here now obviously while you've got a soldering iron under them it's quite easy just to lever them out but getting them back in is an absolute bastard you've got a little ground plane here that all these caps attach to and trying to desolder is an absolute pain so I've ended up having to buy a desoldering tool to suck out the solder that's inevitably stuck in the uh, stuck in the through holes there um, so that's that's where I'm at with uh, with the repair on this one uh, I'm not too hopeful <laughs> that replacing those uh, electrolytics from here is actually going to solve the problem but we'll see okay we've got uh, got the graticule illumination connection off and what we're going to try and do now is get this board out uh, Phillips have kindly place the board in this clip fit fitting and I'm going to leave the fitting in place and try and push these out push these clips out and then just try and drag the board out a little bit to get over them it's not easy Maybe we'll try this side.
Yeah, that's the problem, that's broken that clip off on that side. Okay, so I lost a bit of the video there due to my SD card being filled up. Um, so you can see there, I've broken that that clip off there. I'm certainly not going to lose any sleep over that. That one's still intact, and you can see maybe that the board has just slipped out on both sides of those clips. So. It should be now a relatively simple job of getting this out. Now, some of you may recognise this phrase that if you're doing this sort of work, you do so at your own risk. Um, there's some big capacitors in here. These things will hold a hell of a charge. It's a switch mode power supply. And there'll be 400 volts here, it'll kill you. So if you don't know what you're doing, leave it to someone who does. This power supply, let's say, it does essentially work despite it smelling like my old car with a burned out starter motor. So we can be fairly confident that the capacitors are all nicely discharged because I really don't fancy 400 volts running through me and this some bitch still doesn't want to come out oh we go that was good value So I think on the last time I did this, I did actually loop up a cable tie, wrapped it around the main transformer and used that to pull it out. Okay, so yeah, this front side, make sure that the handle <coughs> is pulled out. This one constantly wants to slip, slip back into position. There we go, that's, that is, that is out. Okay, so the board is finally out. Uh, I've disconnected everything uh, just so I can get the board up upright uh, if you need to test anything you can plug everything back in uh, and have the board oriented like that just so you can have it running without going through the rigmarole of putting the bugger in and then getting it out again 
But there is our reef of friends looking rather sorry. Um, it's actually quite amazing that it will run. Even though it is just a filter cap, it will run in this condition. Um, but yeah, so we're going to desolder that. I'll just check these two filter caps as well. Again, these filter caps, this one's going between the two live and neutral wires and is an X2 rating. And these capacitors are going between the live and neutral and to ground. And these are Y rated safety. Don't replace them with anything that's not uh, X or Y rated because uh, it's going to end in tears. Hope this has been of help. This is just going to be uh, desolder this one, replace it with new, and plug it back in. Hope this has been of help. Thanks for watching.